Hey everyone, it's Cynthia, Psychic and Astrologer. So today we're going to be discussing what you can expect for the month of May. I'll try to go into as much detail as I possibly can for each sign. Um, but right now I'm just going to mainly go over the main events to expect for the month of May astrologically. So let's get started. So the first main event for the month of May will come on May 5th. Now, on May 5th, we will have a full moon lunar eclipse in the sign of Scorpio. Now, this is actually going to be quite a significant eclipse. Venus and Jupiter are going to connect very well with this eclipse, even though we are going to have um, some challenges with Mercury and Uranus, because Mercury and Uranus are going to be opposing uh, the eclipse, but there will also be a great connection with Mars. So having Venus and Jupiter connect well, okay, first let me back up. Now the sign of Scorpio, one of the big uh, themes that I put about Scorpio is that it usually relates to uh, the eighth house. The eighth house rules joint assets, joint resources, taxes, credit, loans, um, settlements, uh, inheritance. Um, when you're going through a divorce, you know, the dividing of assets, you know, those legal issues. So having Scorpio as a full moon eclipse and then a great connection with Venus and Jupiter, Venus and Jupiter, Jupiter can bring about great financial and material benefits and opportunities. So keep an eye the next six months. Now, an eclipse will last six months. So keep an eye the next six months as this could bring about great opportunities that could bring you more money, more opportunities, financial opportunities, career opportunities. This could also create a situation where you are gaining financially through other resources like taxes, credit, inheritance, settlements, bonuses, commissions, gifts, rewards. Um, the reason why you always hear me using the words gifts and rewards is because I've seen people gain like a year supply of whatever, you know, and that's the reward. Or you enter it into a contest and you end up winning, like I said, a year supply of something, you know, or two tickets to a concert or something, you know, those kinds of winnings. It doesn't have to be the winnings of games of chance like the lottery or casino. Yes, that is a possibility, but that, that is not guaranteed. So you definitely want to keep an eye the next six months on that. Now, if you are dealing with a situation where you are going through a divorce, a separation, a breakup, and let's say that there needs to be the dividing of assets, the dividing of um, material items, this can be um, in relation to the situation of a full moon eclipse in Scorpio. Now, this could also be something that maybe even benefits you. Because of that Venus and Jupiter connection, maybe you're the one that gains at the end. Maybe you gain through uh, you walking away more with something uh, beneficial for you. And maybe it doesn't work well with the other person or the other entity, but it benefits you at the end. So this could actually be something that um, ends up working out for you. So you, one of the things that you definitely want to keep an eye out for is where Scorpio falls in your chart, um, because that's also going to play a, a factor in how it affects you. Obviously, if you're an Aries, it's going to be in your eighth house. But if you are, for instance, like a Libra, it's going to be in your second house. So the second house was financials, uh, earned income, Maybe you're going to gain through a new job offer, a new source of income. Now, when we are dealing with a full moon, usually full moons bring about a sense of ending, something to completion. So maybe you leave one job to go into another job, and then maybe that job ends up be being beneficial for you, or maybe it brings you more money, or maybe you even gain through bonuses and commissions, or it helps you bring in more sales. Um now, with some houses, it'll be beneficial on a on a social level. So, for instance, like uh, Cancer will benefit through the fifth house, while Capricorns will benefit through the eleventh house. So, it could be a very social time for you. Maybe there is a possibility of gaining financially through those sources, through through those connections. But maybe you gain through love and relationships and a social life and a love life. 
So it could be very beneficial in that way. If you're a Taurus, it's the partnership house. So maybe the partner somehow brings about an opportunity for you to gain through them. Now, I have seen where you could gain through the partner through marriage. Obviously, if your partner is in a better financial status and you get married, even if even if there's a prenup and in that prenup, you don't get anything. But in the meantime, you're going to live in a nicer house, bigger house. Maybe you gain through nicer items, material items. So maybe you benefit in that way. Um, I have seen many times where people gain in that, in that resource, in that way, in that direction. So this could actually be very significant in that sense. Obviously, if you're a Scorpio, it's in your own sign and house. This is all about you and your needs and your personal wants and needs. You're going to get plenty of attention. It's going to be all about you, people praising you, bringing you attention, Venus and Jupiter being very beneficial and building a great connection to you. Maybe you gain a lot of attention of your own. Um, Aquarius will gain through a uh, career. So this could maybe bring about opportunities of a promotion, advancement, an opportunity that could bring you more money, more opportunities. Um, if you are a Leo, you gain through the fourth house. So maybe the fourth house could be a relocation, renovation, uh, maybe changes in the home. And that's in the next six months. So this is actually going to be a very significant time with the full moon eclipse. Now, if you were born between, um, I'm going to say from the first of the month to about the 10th of the month, you'll definitely feel the energy of this eclipse the strongest. Everyone's going to feel it. But if you were born around that time frame, you will feel it the strongest at the time. So keep an eye what has begun maybe 30 days prior to this eclipse. Um, and then the next six months that could bring about um, a lot of opportunity there. And like I said, could easily bring financial and material opportunities too. So the next major event will actually be with, actually there's going to be two more events, but um, let me discuss the new moon on May 19th in Taurus. So Taurus is a very hardworking sign. I always put it out there. It's probably one of the most hardworking signs out there. And the next two weeks at the new moon, so this is actually going to be a great time. It will connect well with Mercury and Saturn and connects well with Mars and Neptune um, and even with Pluto. So great connections with Pluto and Mars. It's, it's just a time of strategy, of being centered and focused and working hard and starting to maybe even implement plans, especially if it is going to be related with work, career, the future of uh, opportunities to maybe bring in more financial security, stability. This is actually going to be a very good time for you. So you definitely want to keep an eye on uh, the two weeks after May 19th. I think it's going to be a very positive new moon. The one thing that I do like about this new moon is that it's definitely going to make you very strategic. I will use the word strategic. And I think it's actually going to be a time where um, you just look at the very fine details of a plan, um, whether it's financially related, maybe you are strategizing to uh, purchase a home, a vehicle, a computer. You're just looking at the tedious numbers, the little, every little dot, every little I, you're crossing it out, making sure everything is right. I think this is actually going to be very beneficial for you because you're going to really focus more on being detailed than just taking a great chance and just seeing where all the chips end up falling at the end. So what I really like about this new moon is that it's really going to really pay off down the road, but you're going to have uh, eclipses also with this um, that we're going to go through as we're slowly moving into the Aries and Libra eclipses. So all this is kind of like finishing things up in an area or in a place in your life, whether it's career related, financial related, it's about the long term investment of something. Um, if you haven't already done so, make sure that you 
check out uh, the horoscopes that I have posted for May because that'll definitely tell you what you can expect for your sign. But right now, I'm just going to go very quickly and explain what each sign can expect. Obviously, Taurus, it's in your own house. So this is all about you and your personal wants and needs. Gemini, it's really going to be a time of, like I said, reflecting and really taking uh, a more cautious approach. Your, your mind is going to be racing with thoughts and ideas and maybe I could do this, maybe I could do that. You're, you're very mentally focused, but this time you're going to be, like I said, strategic in your ideas. Um, cancer, it's definitely a more social time for you. So maybe you're just kind of, you know, connecting more with family and friends. Um, so for Leo, it's, it's a career. It's about career. Maybe there's a promotion. Maybe there's a, an opportunity to build a business, a business venture. Keep an eye on that. There's more. I got to discuss about that here very soon with something else coming up. Another big event. Uh, but keep an eye on that. So Virgo, there could be some travel. Maybe it's about uh, investing. Maybe it's about uh, making long-term plans. So keep an eye for that the next couple of weeks. Libra, financially related. So maybe you're taking care of some financials there. Um, Scorpio, you're definitely going to be looking at partnerships and relationships and maybe building a greater connection. Again, this could also be a situation where you're just not going to do things by yourself. And um, with Sagittarius, it's about working hard, taking care of tasks and projects, and also taking care of your own health and well-being. So uh, Capricorn, love life, social life, is just being social and connecting with others. Aquarius, it will relate to the home. Uh, maybe it's just making changes around the home. Maybe you're relocating in the next couple of weeks. And then Pisces, it's going to be a time of travel. Maybe It's more like short trips versus long distance trips, but expect communication to increase, whether it's emails, text messages, phone calls. I got more to discuss here very soon about that. But right now, just keep an eye that this new moon can be very significant with that. And the big news of Jupiter going into the third house for you, got a lot going on. So keep an eye for that. And there's more that's going to be coming up later on in the year. So the big news of this month is actually going to be that Jupiter will enter a new sign and house on May 16th. Now it's moving away from the sign of Aries and now going to enter the sign of Taurus. Now it's going to be in this sign and house for the next 12 months. I'm not going to go in detail about Jupiter in your particular sign because I did discuss it in your yearly horoscope. Um, so look for the video links if you don't find them in the comment uh, underneath here. But go back to your particular sign. I do discuss Jupiter in your uh, in Taurus for your sign. So in your yearly horoscope that I posted, actually I posted them last year. This is actually going to be significant. Remember, I was discussing with the new moon about Taurus, hardworking sign, really investing about the long term. So now we're going to have Jupiter. Now, I did want to mention that with that new moon on May 19th, Jupiter has just entered Taurus. So having Jupiter, Jupiter loves to give. And a new moon in Taurus and then Jupiter in Taurus it's probably one of the greatest new moons for for the month of May. By the way, Mercury has finally gone direct on May 15th. So we don't have to deal with that. We have a great new moon. We have Jupiter in Taurus. Remember, check out your yearly horoscope to find out how it's going to affect your particular sign. But I think the energy of that new moon, Jupiter in Taurus, about investing for the long term, uh, really focusing on the future. Um, I don't think you could have asked for anything better during this time. No Mercury retrograde because it finally went direct. So there's definitely going to be a lot going on. There's going to be a lot going on for this the rest of this year and into next year with Jupiter and Taurus. And I think it's really going to be an opportunity that could benefit you financially or 
it could also bring about a time of, like I said, investing into your future. And maybe you're working towards something, you're building towards something. And Jupiter, wherever it falls in your sign, is just going to heighten everything for you in that sign, uh, in that house. So uh, definitely check it out. And I really feel that this could easily bring about a, a significant opportunity for you. Like I said, that could benefit you for the long term. That could be very beneficial for you and maybe even making a career change. So that could be a, a play a big factor for you. So good news on that. Definitely, there's going to be a lot going on. And I think if anything, you're really going to enjoy that this could uh, really pay off, like I said, for the long term. So just want to finish off um, things to look forward to for the month of May. Uh, Venus will enter Cancer on May 7th. Mars enters Leo on May 20th. The Sun enters Gemini on May 21st. Um, I do want to point out very quickly, at least for any other uh, transits that are going to be out there, maybe to kind of monitor. I did want to mention... Um, May 7th, uh, minus the fact that Venus enters uh, Cancer. It has nothing to do with that. So there's going to be kind of a little bit of a tough connection with Venus and Pluto during that day. Um, and it's just for a day. It, it's just for that day. So on that day, um, the way I would associate the energy, when it comes down to personal relationships, there could be a bit of a, I don't know if I want to use the like a little tug of war kind of energy maybe someone pushing to have things more their way, uh, maybe being a little bit pushy, uh, maybe maybe even a little disrespectful. That could create maybe some tension, maybe a disagreement, maybe an argument. Um, the only thing maybe I would say is that could be a time of just trying to see how to work through some issues versus trying to kind of work against each other. It doesn't have to be a, a romantic relationship. This could even be a friendship. And it might be just a situation of having to maybe just have the understanding that maybe there needs to be a more deeper discussion. That's even if anything of that kind of tension occurs, just be aware that it may occur. Like I said, it doesn't have to be a romantic relationship. It could be a friendship. It could be something maybe with a coworker maybe with a client, maybe with a customer, and it's only for the day. So just kind of be aware that can happen. I did want to point out some good positive days, positive social days are um, May 9th and May 12th. Oh, and uh, May 26th. Positive social days, great time to be social, outgoing, maybe meet new people, attend an event, a party. Um, I think overall, the energy of those days are really, really good. All right, so just know what to expect for the month of May. A lot going on here. And again, like I said, check out your yearly horoscope for your sign to find out how Jupiter in Taurus will affect you. Enjoy and more to come. <music>